this is indeed a good conference, as so many people have stayed after the wine post. That's, uh, that's a compliment for me. Thank you for the warm intro. Um, my name is Sabine, and I'm the co-founder of Sorry as a Service. Uh, we have graduated from Techstars, which is one of the leading uh, startup accelerators in the world. Um, also started White Guys in Estonia. Um, my background is I used to run a social media agency, so I helped uh, some brands to actually shape their appearance in front of their customers' eyes. Um, and I'm a graduate at SSC Liga. A little bit about Sorry as a service. We like to call ourselves um, customer happiness platform. We help companies to retain, reward, acquire, and recover customers using physical surprises and delights. We also consult and run workshops um, for bigger and smaller companies that the ones, to, the ones to become more customer-centric and uh, improve customer loyalty uh, throughout the customer lifecycle. We've deployed our solution with uh, many exciting and big companies. Um, here are a couple of them, which is like Telecelera, Tele2, TransferWise, BSF, Critman4, and as well uh, with BT, which is one of the biggest telcos in UK and I would say even in Europe. I know that the um, previous presentations were fairly technical, and, uh, but I want to touch a little, little different angle here. And I want to talk about relationships, and particularly relationships at scale. Relationships that are powered by technology. But before I go that, I want to take a step back, and um, I want to address what this company means. I think we are all familiar with a word that describes commercial business entity. But we also know that the same word is described, uh, describes the fact or condition of being with another or others, especially in a way uh, that provides friendship and enjoyment. Um, so I would say relationships are the key in every business. First of all, business is run by people. We don't know many big and successful companies that are run by an individual. Therefore, employee relationships are important. But the relationships for your customers um, is even more important aspect to be a successful business. Um, and here I want to share three realities that uh, I've seen from my experience uh, that co companies are facing today um, as a challenges to actually establish great relationships. So reality one, um, not too many years ago, companies were constrained to have as many customers as they could uh, communicate, as they could uh, service. So they were very personal. Imagine your local butcher, your local banker, your local insurance broker. Everyone knew by name. They remember what, what, uh, what are the customers' preferences. Now the situation has slightly changed. We have found great ways how to scale the operations using technology. Um, and for example, one of the examples, like WhatsApp, it's a 55 employee company, and they have 1 billion active users. Imagine the scale of that. So we have, we have managed to scale the uh, uh, operations dramatically, but I think the relationships haven't caught up with that yet. The second reality I see that with the advance of technologies, it's much harder to actually communicate with customer. For example, I think a lot of us is using Adblock to remove some unnecessary ads while we're browsing the web. Um, we are watching television like, like uh, Netflix or La Telecom here in Latvia, uh, where we can see whatever we want, how we want, and uh, without ads. We use social media where we actually curate our own news feeds. We follow the brands we like, we follow the people we like, and we don't follow the ones we don't like. Um, so, fun fact here. On average, a person sees around 5,000 advertisements per day. Um, and I have a question for you. How many ads do you remember from yesterday? Imagining like you're going to work, there's some ads on the streets, there's a little bit of radio, there's a little bit of TV. We're becoming so good at filtering them. But an average person re research has shown to remember zero to three ads from yesterday. And companies 
are paying thousands and thousands and millions of euros to actually buy these views. Um, I think each view costs from a fraction of cents to a couple of euros. And uh, why the companies are buying these uh, uninterested, uncaring glimpses from people? Um, why does it happen? And I would say because brands and companies are still stuck into old relationship model. And I will help you to visualize how the old, old relationship model looks like and how the new one looks. So it used to be fairly simple, one directional brands were telling who they are and um, customers, they, they just simply listened. And you won't believe it, these ads are only some 30, from some 30 years ago, like this one. What is the best way how your, how your kids can get some vitamins? Donuts, of course, that is, that is the first thing that came into my mind. Blow into her face and she'll follow you everywhere. What can be even more sexy than a, like a breath after cigarettes? As, a, as your dentist, I suggest you to soak viceroys. Imagine, doctors suggesting to smoke. Would this work today? I don't think so. Because we are much more educated, critically thinking audience now. So the relationship model has quite changed. And now it looks a little bit more like this. Brands are telling what they want to be. And then we, we consumers, customers, we discuss it, we chat about it, we tweet about it, we write some review, and then we communicate back to the brand whether we agree with that or not. The third reality that I'm seeing today is um, the switching costs have decreased dramatically. So the importance of the relationship has become as important as ever. Um, to kind of visualize how it was before and how it's now, uh, the acquisition of funnel looked like this. Again, one directional, people discovered, considered, evaluated, uh, purchased and used the product and rarely switched among the service providers. How does it look today? It's a continuous process where customers, they purchase, they use, then again. Then again, they start to evaluate from the, from the scratch what competitors has to offer. Is there someone with a better price? Is there someone that can, uh, with much better features? Um, or there's someone who just communicates with me better? So after every purchase, we need to ensure this, that the relationships are strong with the customer. Challenging times. Um, so to illustrate what, how does the switching costs really uh, work, I, would, I could take uh, industry of uh, mobile operators. It used to be a big hassle to actually change a mobile, mobile operator without changing your number. Now it's pretty easy to just go to the shop, cha change the SIM cards, um, and you're up and running. And, and companies are even trying to get you, get you to change the operator. And looking further, Apple has presented a SIM card where you don't need to even change it. You can change your mobile operator in your phone. What does it mean to the mobile operator companies? It means that if, for example, a customer is calling and he's maybe too long on a ho kept on hold, um, he can actually switch the mobile operator during the call if he's not happy with the service. And this is happening across all the industries because of the availability of internet, smartphones, um, et cetera. So to sum it up, these are the three realities that I see today, that companies have managed to scale the relation, uh, operations, but not the relationships. Customers don't listen what company is saying anymore. They listen to each other. And um, switching costs are decreasing. Therefore, the importance of relationship are increasing and increasing. That's about it. But uh, I wanted to show you some examples how companies have managed to find ways how to get through this noise uh, and uh, give some suggestions on how to speak with your customer better. First of all, make customers talk about you in dinner parties. TransferWise, um, TransferWise is a money transfer company. Um, and if you, don't, if you don't know who they are, then 
you should pay attention because these are, this is a, one of the rare billion dollar companies from our region. Um, so what do they do? They are running really crazy campaigns where they put out their, all their employees naked on the streets. Um, they come up with some really loud, uh, really loud slogans for, uh, against banks. And um, people often ask why they're doing that. And this is really interesting. They're not targeting new customers. They are targeting their, their existing customers. And why do you do that? Because money transfers are extremely boring. No one wants to talk about money transfers. No one cares about exchange rates um, among their friends. Um, so they are giving something to talk about to their existing customers. And they are concurring dinner, dinner conversations, bar counters, and um, cafes. They're running pretty smart and sophisticated uh, social media and um, email and um, simply search retargeting campaigns to their existing customers. Second suggestion, apologize as you would do it for a friend. This is a case study from our own experience. We are uh, working with BT uh, and we are working uh, within their executive level complaint uh, team. So executive level complaints are working with customers with the most painful, um, lo longest and uh, the most, uh, not the nicest cases uh, out there. And we run an experiment that, uh, that agent just personally apologized by sending flowers. We are integrated with their CRM system. Uh, and then we measured what is, what is happening afterwards. 89% of customers got back to BT, thanking for, um, for the apology. And this was a crucial point uh, in actually solving the issue, because at this, is, this was the point when BT realized, when the customer realized that BT is actually, there's a person who is caring and putting their efforts to resolve their issue. Show some, showing some uh, human side also from, for uh, such huge companies is so important. Listen carefully and grab these opportunities. Um, here I am talking about very careful real-time social media monitoring. Um, I'll give you an example. Peter Shankman uh, knows a thing or two about customer service. As an author, consultant, and um, speaker, he, uh, it's, it's safe to say that his standards are high. Um, so he had a situation where he was uh, uh, boarding up the plane and he was pretty hungry. And he jokingly tweeted to his favorite restaurant, Morton's. Hey, Morton's, can you meet me at Newark Airport with a porterhouse when I land in two hours? Okay, he boarded the plane and when he lands, actually the Morton's restaurant came in with delivering his favorite steak. And of course, Peter uh, tweeted, oh my God, I don't believe it. Ed Morton showed up at the uh, Newark airport with a porterhouse, hashtag OMFG. This has been republished as one of the best uh, customer service cases all, all over the world, but it wouldn't be possible if Morton's wouldn't be monitoring their, their social media so carefully and responding to customers so um, dedicatedly. And there's a lot of companies. These opportunities happen from time to time. Uh, and, um, and also, so there are some bad moments which, you, which companies could have prevented by responding uh, quickly and efficiently. And we know a lot of PR disasters happening just because companies didn't pick up the issue early enough. So monitoring social media in real time is very important. Customers like to speak with people. I think it's very simple and we can all um, imagine uh, sitting on, a, on, a, on hold calling some customer support. Um, but um, this is a very important issue and, and companies need to invest in customer support to ensure shorter waiting times and more human interaction. But even if not managing, there's so many tools out there that can uh, help to improve this process. There's, uh, there's tools that help to actually outsource the um, customer support very effectively. Um, providing more agents when it's a peak time and less when it's not. Um, there are some really smart machine learning 
uh, technologies that actually recognize the customer, recognize the need, rec recognize the products, uh, product he or she is using, and connect with agent that can solve the issue the, the shortest. There is even some technology that uh, can, uh, uh, can uh, find what personality types are the customer and, and then match with the one that goes, uh, that, uh, that could uh, communicate uh, the best. So there's a lot of innovation invest in uh, customer support. Um, and the fifth one is surprise them in unexpected moments to increase the loyalty. Uh, and here I put another example of customer reports. Uh, Truva is an e-commerce platform for a small independent designer, designers and designer boutiques where they can sell their, uh, sell their products. Uh, and what we did, it's, um, it's an API integration within their ordering system. And uh, they have a big problem. And I think this problem is uh, happening in a lot of e-commerce companies. The problem is called second purchase. Uh, they somehow managed to get the first one. But uh, because the switching costs, I would say, is non-existent in this industry, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, it's so important to use this short moment to establish the loyalty there. And what can be go wrong if there's something out of stock or uh, the delivery takes, I don't know, a month? Um, so we have integrated our system with theirs, and every time there is some hiccup with, uh, with their order, they receive a cookie with, uh, with the name Python uh, on the cookie. And this has been immense. Uh, immense uh, social media activity from that, because that is something that people don't ex expect at all. And uh, people are writing handwritten letters back to the company and saying, oh, but it's not your fault. I will come back anyway. And uh, this, these are the moments where customers actually talk about, talk with each other and talk about. Uh, and uh, it's important to find these kind of pain points and um, make them delightful and exciting for customers. That's it. I think I introduced you with the three realities that I'm facing and uh, five examples I like. Feel free to ask me any questions, drop me an email. I'm pretty responsive. Um, thank you very much. I really enjoyed your company. Thank you so much, Sabine. Uh, that was one of the first questions on the Slido. I'm sure Edis will take it from there. Is there any moment when it's too late? Um, when even you cannot help a company? Of course, it's the moment when the customer has already gone to the competitor. Okay, but before correct. they do, there's still some options left. Yeah, yeah. What's for the worst case you've dealt with? Oh, <laughs> there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of really uh, bad cases. It's something that have felt left you feeling like, gosh, I didn't think we'll do this, but we did. Um, yeah, there was one, uh, one um, actually BT customer, uh, which was a woman that was, she was so angry, she was just like putting everything out in uh, Twitter. Uh, it was like, she was screaming to everyone, and then I sent flowers. And then I, actually she wrote back like, oh my God, this really meant so much. And uh, she afterwards, uh, they had this kind of invite program. She actually recommended people and uh, some, some of her family members joined as well. It is really important because I think we, uh, I think we value relationships. Like with our friends, we see how the relationships are going in bad times mm -hmm. and that we can trust them in good times. I think it's similar with the companies. If you deal really nicely when it's, when it's shaky, when it's not good, the person will stay because he knows how it is done when it's kind of All bad. Right. All right, I think uh, we're approaching uh, 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 six o'clock. So uh, we're about, uh, what is the best way to say sorry? I mean, this is the, um, the most popular question, but uh, your, your personal favorites or? Uh, <laughs> a couple of people are beginning to flirt with you. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> 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 what do you do tonight or something? <laughs> Actually, right. the most uh, often question that I got is that, can I use it, this with my girlfriend or wife? <laughs> can you? <laughs> Can you? Can I? They're like no. a couple of guys. We're just B2B. We're just B2B for They're now. They're going to be home B2B, late yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> they, they just, a couple of your customers. But what's the problem? Why not B2C? Why can't you do it B2C? 
<laughs> Maybe. It seems like a big market if uh, so many people we'll are asking about see. it. <laughs> Guys, we need to take down this Lido. I mean, wine is pretty good. And <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're done. Okay. <laughs> You've got it all wrong. That was, uh, that's supposed to go under the questionnaire on how happy you are with the conference. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. In any case, uh, a large thanks to Sabine here. Okay.